Hi, and welcome to Deployment News. This is where you learn about what's going on in the MDT deployment and systems management space. Today we are sending from uh, downtown Seattle, and uh, I'm very proud to have David James with me from Microsoft. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Sean. So, who are you, and what do you do at Microsoft? Sure. My name is David James. Uh, people call me by my alias of Microsoft DJAM because I don't like duplicate GUIDs, and David's a common name. Explains um, your Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> my Twitter handle is DJammer. Yeah. This is my Xbox gamer handle. Um, so I'm a development manager, or now I guess a director of engineering for configuration manager. Um, I've been at Microsoft uh, since about the year 2000, where I started as a developer on SMS installer. Some people remember that, some people won't. Um, but I've worked on all the versions of SMS since 2.0. Um, I worked as an engineering manager in Intune for three years between 2012 and 2015. 2015, I had the opportunity to kind of reboot the configuration manager team, to rethink it, and so now we're on configura configuration manager current branch. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So <coughs> speaking of the current branch, and you basically have two servicing branch now, yeah. or branches. You have the technical preview, and you have the current branch. Yeah. So um, what did you as a team have to, to do or yeah. to, to change it to that model? Because it was very different from these one, two, three, four, five year cycles right. with, with releases. No, exactly. When, when uh, my boss, Brad Anderson, asked me, he's like, can you go double down on the investment in configuration manager? I said, well, here's a problem. We used to ship configuration manager every four, four five years. Um, we used to take two years to test it. Yeah. Um, we used to have a long beta cycle. And now to keep up with Windows, we have to ship every four months. Um, so we had to, we kind of had to rethink everything. And in fact, if you ask me what we had to change, we changed probably everything except the programming languages we use. We still use C++ and C Sharp, um, but we had to reinvent how we, how we shipped, how we uh, went to beta, how we qualified it. Um, and, and we took a lot of the principles we learned from working on Intune for three years. Um, how to build a service, and we basically took the principles of building a service and we applied them to building a on-prem product like Configuration Manager. So we use exposure control, we use flighting, we had to accelerate our, our feedback loop, so we use things like user voice to get more real-time feature feedback. We use things like telemetry to get more real-time usage feedback. Um, we just had to do things real-time just like we would a service. And that's why we kind of like to call it SCCM as a service. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we had to rethink a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, Intune works pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Monthly releases. Yep. Um, same goes to Windows these days also, of course. So, um, speaking of wrapping up, the, the, I mean, you used to have this long period of testing. Yeah. How, how do you actually test things now when you have such a, well, in my opinion, short yeah. cycle? No, it's, it, it's a great question. It, we have the luxury that we worked on Configuration Manager for so many years that we had um, 55,000 test cases. So we wanted for each release. <laughs> we just had these test cases, and so um, we built those up, and half of them are automated. So we can run twenty-five thousand test cases in seven days. We just push a button, you know, seven days. We come, we get a good test result, and then a bunch of the rest we have to run manually. Um, and so we've been able to shrink kind of that eighteen-month end game we used to have down to about eight weeks. We want to get it to about six weeks, and that lets us have a much faster release cadence. That's pretty um, cool. So, I mean, over the years, you have been rapidly uh, racked up the number of how many clients, uh, for yeah. example, single site, uh, primary site will support. Yep. it. So, do you actually test without many machines? Oh, positively. So, I mean, I mean the other benefit is between S Configuration Manager 2007 and 2012, we changed a whole bunch of the architecture. Things like we moved to SQL replication for site-to-site -site communication. Um, that gave us a foundation, all those architectural changes, to where we can go a lot faster now. Those, those foundational changes also allowed us to go from a total hierarchy scale of 200,000 to now internally we test above a million. Wow. We don't have a customer that needs a million yet, but we test, we push it that high to kind of find the bottlenecks and the next level of bugs and, that we would hit in perfect scale. So yeah, I was yeah, watching and, the, uh, the end zone yeah. program with Ben yeah. Anderson and Simon. Uh, last night, actually, yeah. and they just announced that one of their, no, not one, the biggest customer just went up to current branch 1610, I think it was, mm -hmm. 
460,000 clients. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's you a know, lot I of think machines. <laughs> yesterday, I think I saw the biggest customer was about 490. Oh, so. Wow. Yeah. And, and the bigger customer this week is bigger, is a different customer than two weeks ago. Yeah. And someone else upgraded that was huge. That, so that's, that's, pretty, that's good. That's pretty cool. And we don't know who they are. It's anonymous. Yeah, yeah but still. So. Uh, I only know a few companies that, that size that runs Config Manager, so I yeah. think it would be one of them. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we always, we basically have a bench of a million clients that we're always testing. We have a bench of uh, 200,000 standalone that we're always testing. These are above our public supported numbers, but we're just always testing our scale and our perf to so find the issues. are you using your own Azure environment for yes. testing? And yes, we have this internal um, tool set called Nova because testing, as you know, especially in the OSD world, testing configuration manager goes really to the low levels of the hardware. Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to test on VMs. You got to rep, you got to simulate a lot of things, networks and and uh, you know boundaries and and WinPE. So we have a, a test system that lets us do those things, and sometimes we also back it by Azure. In fact, I want to say last week we hit it where. My team was using 9,500 simultaneous virtual machines to do our testing. Wow. Um, and at least half of it was Azure, and half of it might be on physical because we need to test both sides. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so these different branches, technical previews versus yeah. current branch, how, how are they different for, for you guys? Yeah. So, so one, of the, one of the things we learned from working on Intune and coming back to Configuration Manager is we actually, from an engineering team that wants to go this fast, you can't have two branches. So the code for technical preview and for the production builds are the same code base. We just use exposure control. We use flighting to turn features off in production that aren't ready. So basically the branching is just a label. It's just a label. It's, yeah. it's basically an exposure control. So when we build the tech preview, and our tech preview will build it on Tuesday and we'll ship it on Friday. Um, and, and we'll build it on Tuesday and find some bugs and fix it on Wednesday and find some bugs fix on and hopefully ship it on Friday. And the reason we can do that is because it's, we're only testing one branch all the time. All those 50,000 test cases are against the same code base. We're not splitting our test efforts against a preview build and a production build. Um, so, you know, we, we have, we might be, if, for example, we will be shipping a tech preview next week, um, we are tracking maybe 12 features to be in that tech preview. Maybe we'll get to Tuesday and only eight of them are ready, so we'll turn off four of them. Yeah. We'll ship the build on, on Friday. Then when we get to production, you know, we'll do the same thing. And 1702, which is getting really close to shipping, um, I think we're tracking about 50 features to be on in 1702. Wow. And you know, 45 of them are looking really good. Five of them we might have to turn off last minute, but that's how we can, can manage doing both tech preview and production out of the same build. And I, I can tell you, as a config manager techie, I yeah. like to play around with config manager things. This re stuff of releasing on Friday, that's <laughs> so shiny, because then I know I have the weekend. I can yeah. actually play around with the thing. So don't stop doing that. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. You know, the, the other thing that I like about the tech preview, I, you know, on the car right here, I was trying to do the math. And we shipped our first tech preview, Ignite 2015, I think. And we've shipped 21 tech, we shipped every month except the month right after that Ignite build. So we shipped in, in May, then we, shipped, we skipped June, then July, and every month since. So yeah. it's been 21 tech previews in a row. That's pretty exciting. That is. So for companies that want to, or organization wants to evaluate and test these, yeah. uh, what, what do you recommend? What, what should be their approach? Should they have like two separate lab environments or? One for current branch and one for the technical preview. Yeah, well, well, definitely, you know, tech preview. The the most uh, useful way for that is, you know, like I said, we build it and we basically ship it very quickly. Sometimes we'll ship it when we know features don't work, and the reason is our most important value of tech preview is get new features out as early as we can to get feedback on not the quality but on the features. You know, does this feature usability make sense? Did the you know, does it have the, the options and flexibility that, that customers need? So we ship features in Tech Preview as early as we can to get that feedback. Yeah. So if you think of Tech Preview, that's, you know, what customers should use is, is try it. If you see new features that you're interested in, look at them, give us feedback, use user voice to give us feedback. Um, production is, you know, obviously what you should run in production. Tech Preview is crippled. You can't run it above 10 clients. 
that's by design because we know that we haven't tested it a lot. Yeah. Um, if you if you want to have a pre-production environment and a production environment, then you should run production in both of those, and you should use Tech Preview just to try new features and give us yeah. feedback. So a small lab and test can yeah. even be like a single VM just running. Yeah, and uh, you know, the easiest way probably to get a Tech Preview environment up is I, I know one of the configuration manager MVPs, Nikolai, has a great blog that how to get it spun up in Azure. Yeah. And and because it's coming every month, you know, if you get that set up, you just go in every month, go into your your Azure VM and click, you know, because easy, the yeah. setup now is so easy. You just click and it and get upgraded month to month. Yeah. So. Yes. Remember to turn it off when you're done labbing, yeah, so you don't right. crack up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Right. So speaking of these user voice uh, yes. things, uh, how, how do you as a team use them? Yeah. So user voice, um, user voice. There's 20 items on a page, yeah. and there's 75 pages. So there's about 1,500 requests on user voice. Uh, the way that we use it is when we ship a feature into production, we'll, we'll mark it completed. When we've shipped it in a tech preview, we'll mark it as started. Um, and when it's 30 days, sometimes 60 days from being in the next tech preview, we'll mark it as planned. So you know, we actually are already coding a lot of times when we haven't marked it planned or, or started yet. We just use those to signify it's close to a preview state and giving us feedback. Of those 1,500 items, 8% um, of them are already marked completed, and then 5 more percent are either started or planned, which means already in tech previews. That's, that's awesome. And, and, and so when we ship 1702 next week, I think we will mark somewhere like 40 more as completed, um, which is exciting to me because if, if you know two years ago when we were going around talking to customers, talking to the community about Configuration Manager current branch, if I said, I'm going to listen to all the requests, all 1,500 of them, I'm going to fix 15% of them in the first year. I, I don't think people would believe that we could do that. So yeah, I remember, I think it was Ignite, could have been MMS, but I don't think yeah. it was Ignite where uh, you had already then completed uh, about 60 of them, or 61 yeah. or 62 of them. And now you almost double that or more. In, yeah. in, that's, wow. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, the, Obviously, the the ones on the first page, their vote counts are in the thousands. I think the top one, which is third-party patching, is is above two thousand votes. Yeah. Um, but we even you, I read through all the user voice. I, I used to read through them all every week, but now there's too many, so I read through them all every two weeks. Yeah. Um, including the ones that have one vote, or some of them have zero votes, and sometimes we complete ones down there too because it just makes sense. That's cool. Um, and then on the on the first page, the top twenty. I think that we have 12 of them are marked as started, which means they're in preview already, yeah. and four more are marked planned, which means they'll be in tech preview probably this month or next month. So even the, even the top requests, we're making a lot of progress on. That's and really someday cool. soon, we'll make progress on the third-party patching. So That's also nice. So yeah. in, in addition to this, uh, I know that, for example, at the MMS conference, yeah. you have a few of your developers also visiting, yeah. and a lot of MVPs also signing up to do these hackathons, yeah. writing code for, well, in less than a day, basically, or often. Can, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, no, hack hackathons um, is, is become kind of ubiquitous now in Microsoft, especially with Satya and the culture that he's driving and moving to kind of a growth mindset, take experiments, take risks. Yeah. And hackathons is just a, a great exercise for engineers to kind of get out of the, the tedious every day that, Thing that they're doing and try something new and take a risk. We do hackathons internally. The ones that we, well, I personally love the most are when we get the MVPs together and do a hackathon and the MVPs will come into to Redmond and we'll pair up with engineers for a week and we'll do 10 projects and then we'll compete and we'll see who wins. Um, and we did our second hackathon uh, last November and there was some great ideas there, some of which we'll ship in 1702. The so first, you actually implemented stuff that yeah, was originating I mean, from hackathons? Yeah, into? for sure. In fact, the first, the first hackathon, we already have shipped, I want to say we shipped like six of the ten features. One of the ones that people know the most is just in the UI when you can see whether machines are online or offline. Oh, yeah, that, the status, yeah. That, you know, that was coded during the first MVP hackathon we did together with the MVPs. Wow, um, that's cool. And then there's a infamous one that someday we'll ship on being able to do nested task sequences. Yeah, I've so. seen that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. It was great to be able to get engineers together with MVPs and really kind of drive the passion of what would make a great feature. Yeah. So where do you see Config Manager will be in, say, two or three years from yeah. now? <laughs> a great question. So three years. So right now is March 
2017. So three years from now will be March 2020. So that's when hopefully we'll be shipping Tech Preview 2003, Three? right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I'm sure we will because I think we have a, a huge uh, customer base for Microsoft for management. Um, and, and as we look at their needs, we'll continue to solve and figure out what they need. Uh, we'll continue to attach configuration manager to services, whether it's Windows as a service or Office as a service or Azure or you know, some of the new services like OMS that are coming out. I think what you'll see is SCCM has just become an enabler for a lot of IT departments to adopt more and more Microsoft technologies, more and more Microsoft Cloud technologies. Yeah, um, yeah so the upgrade uh, analytics connector came yeah, recently. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's what you'll see a lot of is, is configuration manager facilitating more adoption of, of technologies that will help so customers move into forward. and connecting to. Yeah, all right, that's cool. Yeah. So more hybrid things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the way I think about it is is even if you have a, a investment in configuration manager that's on prem, you want to attach to the value of the cloud. You know, let me just give you an example. So configuration manager is about. 14 million lines of code. And we've been building it the same way for years and years. And, and this last year, uh, some of my team took a part of our code base and moved it to what we call cloud build. And what used to take two hours to build, now builds in eight minutes, Wow! right? But you can do that with anything. Think about Patch Tuesday. Patch Tuesday, which when we test a million clients, the, the hard thing is getting through all that state to produce the reports real time. Yeah. But if you use cloud for that, you know, we only, if you have a big a CAS, say, say you're one of those big customers of 400,000, your CAS normally will sit at 1% CPU all month yeah. and until Patch Tuesday, right? And then it'll have to burn through all those state messages. But what if you could just borrow some cloud CPU yeah. for 10 minutes to do it, right? So I, there's a lot yeah. of power of, of scaling out with the cloud or using, you know, just all, all kind of, and machine learning will bring a lot of interesting things to it. And that's what, Things like upgrade analytics are, are really interesting. So I think of, of it as you know, not so much hybrid, but attaching what you have to the power of the cloud. Anything else, um, any cool stuff you want to share around Config Manager? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, I, I've been on the product a long time. Um, yeah, I'm super, passionate about the product and what, what a lot of that passion comes from is just the community I get to work with, the customers I get to, to work with, the features we get to build, the problem set. Um, it's, for me, it's, it's like my dream job and it, I'd love coming to work every morning, but it's, it's especially getting to work with the customers and getting to understand them better and, and you know, whether I talk to some customers of financial or, or education or medical and they're, they're all so different. But, some of their problems are similar, and finding those features and building them, I just get really excited about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Config Manager community has been absolutely fantastic, and, yeah. and I usually, I do trainings every now and then, and I, I usually tell my students that, all right, if you think about something, don't build it yourself first, look around, because the likeness yeah. that somebody already done it yeah. is, is really, really high. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people don't mind sharing either. Yeah. Uh, that that's that's what I like. Right. Contributing is indeed everything. So right. <laughs> that's cool. All right. Thank you so much All for right. coming. Thank you, Jan, for inviting me. Time out of your busy schedule. Thank you very much. So all right. And um, thank you guys. If you have any questions, we are both online on Twitter. D Jammer with three M's. Three M's. And Jarvid Mark is mine. And thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>